are, you've probably got uh, a decent amount of raw materials, manufactured materials, encoded materials, and you've even got some uh, Thargoid and Guardian related materials. But there's one question that may actually be sort of hanging over all of this. What the fuck do you actually do with them? Um, so, for the fourth and final part of the uh, materials guide, we're finally going to go through what you actually use them for. Now, there are three things that uh, you need materials for. Synthesis, uh, technology broker unlocks, and engineering. So, uh, I guess we'll start then with the one that you can do pretty much any time you like. Yeah, synthesis. Um, now, if you've seen uh, the video I did on uh, collecting raw materials, you've already got a pretty good idea of uh, what to do when it comes to synthesizing stuff because I showed you synthesizing um, yeah, your SRV uh, restocking ammo uh, repairing and refueling now when it comes to uh, doing synthesis of uh, anything in your ship it works in exactly the same way um, now, unfortunately, the synthesis options are not very well organised. I wish it would do it so that everything you could synthesise on your ship is up the top. Or better still, they were the only options that appeared. But no, it, it keeps them all there, whether you can use them or not. The one plus point about the fact that it will show you stuff that uh, you you know, you don't have is if it's a weapon that you are going to have or are considering you can always take a look and see uh, what uh, you know, what materials you will need if you're going to synthesize uh, any ammunition for it and it is pretty much um, entirely uh, synthesizing ammo for weapons there are a few exceptions um, the most notable one and possibly the one you're going to use more often if you are doing uh, exploration trips is this one that's highlighted here FSD injection so uh, you select it and uh, you see that um, the basic one the very bottom tier one it only needs one carbon, one vanadium, one germanium. All very easy uh, raw materials to find. And if you do this, um, it will then give you a bonus of 25% uh, to your uh, friendship drive uh, uh, jump range for the next jump. But only for the next jump. If you want it for two jumps, you'll have to do it again once you've arrived at the next system. Now we're standard, uh, again using carbon, vanadium, and germanium, but now also cadmium and niobium. Uh, those last two can be a bit of a pain in the ass to find, but, uh, well, they are raw materials that you are going to particularly want, I think. Uh, we'll cover that when we get to the uh, relevant uh, section. So this one gives you a bonus of uh, 50%. And then finally, um, the premium bonus of plus 100%. So it doubles your jump range. And this uses carbon and germanium again. Um, and this time adds arsenic, niobium, yttrium and polonium. Uh, for well, yeah, Arsenic, despite being a grade 2, can be a real pain to find. It's not as easy as uh, it could be. Yttrium and Polonium, they are pretty rare. Um, 
if memory serves, this is the only time you actually use polonium. So even though um, polonium is extremely rare, it also has very limited use because if you're not going to do uh, phase shift, uh, you know, uh, range boost through the FSD injection, then you're not going to use it. Uh, I've been maxed on polonium for years, and. Uh, Okay, there have been times when I used it during um, exploration trips, <laughs> but I haven't used it for the last two. I really don't see me using it again, so it's useful if you're starting out. But once you've been playing for a while, you, you're probably not going to use um, you're probably not going to use the FSD injection at all. So um, yeah, the uh, weapons and, and modules and that that you can synthesize stuff for. Obviously, you see them highlighted here. So uh, for this ship, plasma munitions, which is uh, you know plasma accelerators. So if you run out of ammunition, uh, but you want to continue uh, combat wherever you are, then yeah, you can uh, synthesize uh, ammunition for it. So uh, we can synthesize the basic, which uses three sulfur, four phosphorus, and one manganese, all very easy to find. Um, now the thing is, if you synthesize basic ammo in any uh, weapon, if you've used up all of your ammo uh, beforehand, this will only refill it up to 50%, so it will only half fill um, your, uh, your ammo capacity again. And also, if you have more than one weapon fitted, so let's say right, you've got two plasma accelerators, you have to do uh, one for each of them. So this uh, synthesis here will only resupply ammo for one uh, plasma accelerator, not two, or in my case, three on this ship. So the standard will add 15% to uh, your uh, damage, uh, you know, that each shot will do. Uh, phosphorus, manganese, uh, five phosphorus, three manganese, one selenium, four molybdenum. It's not actually that difficult to find all of those, so that's uh, not too bad. And then uh, the premium, uh, this adds 30% damage. Uh, so this needs 5 selenium, 4 cadmium, 4 molybdenum, 2 technetium. Mm. I mean, it sounds like it's pretty good. 30% you know, uh, damage. And the standard and premiums will um, completely refill your uh, ammo for that particular weapon. It's not half filled like, like the basic, it's completely filled. But you are using an awful lot of materials. I mean, let's say, for example, on this ship, I've got three plasma accelerators, so I would be using 15 selenium, uh, 12 cadmium, 12 molybdenum, and 6 technetium to refill all three of the uh, plasma accelerators with the 30% uh, damage. As it is, my plasma accelerators already do a decent amount of damage. I've never synthesized ammunition <laughs> from your plasma accelerators. Um, weapons where you are likely to need um, synthesizing stuff for, uh, yeah, if you're using AX multi-cannons like this one, this might be one that uh, you would consider using. What's the weapon? parts that's shown there for the basic two of those yeah you get those from destroying thargoid scouts here sensor fragments as you can get that from uh, a couple of uh, thargoid uh, sources and weapon parts again and then this one sensor fragments again thargoid carapace and weapon parts so uh, yeah you're gonna need thargoid uh, materials for AX weapons with uh, Guardian um, uh, weapons, shock horror, you're going to need uh, Guardian materials to uh, synthesize the ammunition for those. 
So, um, this is the Guardian Plasma Charger. So, yeah, three Guardian Power Conduits and four Guardian Wreckage Components, just for the basic. Uh, for standard, two Guardian Power Cell and two Guardian Technology Components. And then in the Premium, uh, four Guardian Power Cells, three Guardian Sentinel Weapons. Notice also it needs uh, manufactured uh, materials as well, in this case four heat exchangers and six phase alloys. So yeah, it's it's using quite a, a few different uh, material types there. I don't think any of them use uh, encoded for pretty obvious reasons. I will point out this one here, configurable uh, small calibre uh, munitions. So this is if you are using the advanced multi-cannon. Uh, there's also an advanced um, missile rack. So if you're using these, um, if you synthesize uh, your basic ammo, uh, two iron, one nickel, two sulfur, fucking, you, know, you can't move for that stuff. So, getting that will be easy. But if you go to the standard, uh, this then uh, means it will do damage to Thargoid ships. So you can configure your advanced multi-cannons or your advanced uh, missile racks to either be like a regular weapon for, you know, destroying or attacking standard ships, or if you synthesize the standard uh, uh, ammo, it will then do damage to uh, Thargoid uh, interceptors. So the standard here uses uh, two tin, three zinc, three phosphorus, one Guardian power cell, one Guardian power conduit, and one Guardian technology component. Hmm. Uh, seismic charge munitions there, uh, there's only the one type because that's a mining uh, module. Uh, there is no point in having, uh, you know, any other variants, just the basic. Uh, iron, nickel, sulfur, phosphorus, all easy to get. Mercury can be a bit tricky to find, but it only uses one anyway. Uh, now, like I say, most of them are weapon based, but not all. Uh, we've already shown the uh, uh, FSD booster. There's also limpets. Um, if you've either run out of limpets or, like so many of us do, you've forgotten to uh, bring some, you can synthesize them. So, uh, 10 iron and 10 nickel. I mean, iron and nickel are piss easy to find. The drawback, uh, it only synthesizes something like four of them. So, you don't get a hell of a lot, but, uh, you know, you will get some. AFM refill. If you use up uh, all of your uh, repair uh, capacities from your AFM unit, synthesize some more. Uh, the standard here, bonus plus 50% repair speed, and the premium uh, plus 100% repair speed. I really do not see the point of either of those. Um, the regular speed is fast enough, so just stick with that. 2 nickel, 2 zinc, 2 chromium, 3 vanadium, all very easy to get. Chaff, uh, you only get, I think, is it 11 um, launches from your, your chaff, so you may run out of those. Uh, one compact composite, one filament composite, not particularly difficult to find those. Um, yeah, the premium here, it shows bonus two seconds duration. The standard doesn't say anything. So, as far as I can tell, the basic... I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've never used um, the uh, synthesis for chaff. Um, none of my ships have a chaff launcher. So I'm going to have to go on an assumption that the basic one, again, only half fills it. The standard one will completely uh, refill it. The, the premium one will completely refill it and have a bonus two seconds duration on, uh, uh, yeah, on, on how long it lasts. 
seems utterly pointless to me. And when I see that it uses uh, proto radiolic alloys to synthesize that, yeah, no way I'd fucking use that one. Heat sinks have again the same sort of thing. Um, it is likely, especially if you're in uh, an AX ship and you're fighting uh, uh, thyroid interceptors, it is quite likely that you will run out of uh, heat sinks. So, um, and I know this one will completely refill them, the basic. So, basic conductors and heat conduction wiring, two of each, not doing what to find. The standard gives you a bonus of 15% uh, additional heat dissipation, so that uses basic conductors too, heat conduction wiring too, but now also uses two heat exchanges. And then the premium, uh, so this has a bonus 30% heat dissipation. Uh, again, two basic conductors, two heat uh, conduction wiring, two heat uh, exchanges and now proto heat radiators. I've never even had the slightest need to use standard or premium for these. So yeah, just stick to synthesizing your regular uh, heat sinks. And then with your life support, there's no options here. Uh, this will uh, yeah completely restock your life support. So if you've got like you know a, a damaged uh, cockpit and your emergency uh, oxygen is running low is your answer two iron one nickel couldn't get much more fucking basic so yeah you're okay there so no um standard or premium uh, options here because there isn't really the scope for it um one last thing to mention when it comes to uh synthesizing um uh, ammunition. Let's just have a look for uh, a particular one that I'm after, which is a, a Guardian uh, Guardian Gauss cannon munitions. Now these ones, again, I've I've never actually uh, used them, at least not for a while. So actually, let's go to one I have used. Uh, Guardian shard cannons. Now, in the past, I have used uh, premium. Guardian shard cannons. As you can see, they're using a fair few materials here. Eight carbon, four vanadium, they're all easy to get. Eight crystal shards, that can be a pain. And six guardian power cells, that can be a real pain. But let's say, right, you've you've got, you know, your shard cannons there and you've now synthesized your ammunition um, so you have the premium uh, ammo in uh, let's say you've got four of them all four have been, have been done uh, that's a lot of uh, materials you've used to do that once you've done that if you then dock but still have some of your ammunition left whatever you do do not click on the restock all option that you see here you would have to go to uh, advanced maintenance and restock everything individually but do not restock uh, whatever weapon it is um, that you've put the premium ammo in because if you do that it restocks it all with just basic ammo so you lose your premium uh, you know um, whatever the benefits are for your, your premium uh, ammo and you've effectively wasted those materials because your premium ammo has been like replaced with just bog standard stuff always keep that in mind I've lost count of the number of times I've wasted materials because I've used <laughs> because I've used uh, yeah, materials in uh, you know making the uh, premium shark cannon ammo go after like one Thargoid come back uh, you know dock and straight away restock all of my ammunition and bosh all that goes and we're all back to uh, basic again so yeah that is something to uh, keep in mind 
but that is synthesis. Um, you can do it any time you like, uh, but if you're in combat and you're trying to synthesize something, if you take any hits from uh, an enemy ship, uh, the synthesis uh, instantly gets cancelled. You don't lose your materials. The only time that the materials are actually taken away from your inventory is uh, once the synthesis is complete. So at any time, so you change your mind, or you know, change your mind so you manually cancel it, or you're taking hits from uh, <coughs> uh, enemy ships. The synthesis is stopped, but you don't lose your materials. So if you are going to be doing it in a combat situation, you may want to fly off somewhere a bit further away, you know, a bit out of the way or whatever, get it done there and then come back to, uh, you know, wherever you are, whether it's a conflict zone or a uh, resource extraction site or what. So that's synthesis. That is pretty straightforward. Um, and when materials were first uh, uh, added, that was all you could use them for. Um, but since then, it has been uh, extended. So after that, right, we will cover this. Yep, technology brokers. Now, the thing about technology brokers is you have to go firstly to a, a system at a, at a docking station that specifically has it. We are currently at Gardner uh, Orbital, which is in the what's the system called Catton uh, system, and this does have one. Uh, it also has a material trader, which is handy, but it's uh, an encoded material trader, and you don't use an awful lot of encoded uh, materials for. Um, technology brokers. Now, the problem with this demonstration is if I click on technology broker, yeah, I've unlocked them all. Um, there are two technology brokers, or two types. One does uh, human and Thargoid uh, technology, and one does human and guardian hybrid technology, and I've unlocked everything that the two of them do. So how am I going to uh, uh, show you these? Well, um, we'll have to exit the game. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it is most definitely jump cut time. Right, well, here we are on the uh, Inara uh, section for technology brokers. And, um, yeah, when um, you first uh, arrive at a technology broker, if you've not unlocked everything, you're going to see everything um, uh, listed, but of course, the chances are you don't have all the materials or certainly not uh, all of the uh, commodities that you need because, yeah, uh, all uh, of the uh, human and Thargoid uh, related uh, technology that you can unlock um, requires some uh, commodity or other <laughs> real technological uh, terminology that uh, I'll stick with. Um, and it is literally just the case of, right, make sure I've got the uh, materials that I need to unlock, whatever it is. Get the um, uh, commodity that uh, is needed for that one. Bring it to the uh, technology broker. Select it and unlock it. Once it's unlocked, uh, it will be available at every station that will stock this particular item. Basically every station that has the right technology broker. If, if you see there's a technology broker at a station, you know you will also be able to buy uh, whatever it is that has been unlocked. So the human and uh, Thargoid uh, 
uh, broker. So you can unlock the bobblehead, which is just what it is. You've seen it on uh, quite a few of my ships. All of my AX uh, ships have it. It's the bobblehead of the Thargoid Interceptor. So to unlock that, you need 10 meta alloys and a Thargoid heart. So no actual materials used for that one. But then that is an unlock that has no practical use whatsoever. Uh, the corro uh, corrosion resistant cargo rack, this is really useful. Um, it has uh, 16 capacity, so it is far greater capacity than either of the ones you can get from old, uh, what's his name, the uh, uh, engineer uh, Palin. Um, if you buy them from him, yeah, the capacity is either one or two, and that is it. So, yeah, the 16 is much more useful. So you need 26 iron, 18 chemical manipulators. And then you need um, three lots of uh, commodities and quite a few of them. You need 16 meta alloys, 22 radiation baffles, 12 neofabric insulation. Sounds like a bit of a fucking hassle, and to be frank, it is a bit of a hassle, but it's worth it. Um, they are really useful, especially if you are going to be spending a lot of time in, uh, say, Pleiades or uh, Witch Head, and by the sounds of it, um, Colsac Nebula is going that way as well. So, yeah, they, they're worth getting. I definitely recommend it. Which is more than I can say for the next one, the Enzyme Missile Rack. Uh, this is a Class 2 missile. I'm pretty sure it's a Dumbfire missile. I don't think it has a lock. Uh, so to unlock these, you need 16 Thargoid energy cells, 18 Thargoid uh, organic circuitry, 16 molybdenum, 15 tungsten. That's all the materials needed. And you will also need 6 radiation baffles, um, for the commodity. I think the Enzyme Missile Rack is the most useless weapon in the entire game. I think it's a fucking waste of time. Uh, what it basically does is it will fire a missile when it hits the uh, enemy ship. It does the corrosive damage over time like um, the corrosive, uh, corrosive missiles that uh, Thargoids uh, will fire at you. The difference is it has a time limit, it won't just keep on going and going and going. Um, if you use it against uh, AI ships, all they got to do is bugger off, you know, either in, in a super cruise or jump to another system. And, you know, it could be that they'll end up getting destroyed, but they're not in the instance where you are, so uh, you won't get anything for it. It's very slow to uh, act. It's just utterly pointless. If you're going to fire a missile at an enemy ship, then at least fire a missile that does the damage, bang, straight away. Um, I just do not see the point of it at all. Uh, and I get the very distinct impression that I am far from the only one who thinks this. So, um, yes, I've unlocked it purely for completionist's uh, sake. I am a bit of a completionist uh, obsessed one. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's the only reason I got it. Next one, Meta Alloy Hull Reinforcement, which uh, is, as it uh, sounds, it uses Meta Alloys uh, in the uh, Hull Reinforcement package. And it means that um, it provides corrosive resistance, 3% uh, uh, corrosive resistance. Um, Unfortunately, you can't uh, engineer it, so it's useful, but its useful is its usefulness is limited, especially if you look later on at uh, uh, particular guardian um, uh, technology that you can unlock. Um, so, I mean, it's a handy backup. Uh, it needs 25 focus crystals, 22 aberrant shield pattern analysis, 20 configurable components. Uh, and then as far as the 
uh, commodities go 16 meta alloys 12 reinforced mounting plate the meta alloys can be a bit of a pain to get it's but other than that it's, it's not that difficult to get uh, everything you need for that and like I say it has its uses so yeah um, I'm not going to go through all of them but I'll, I'll say right so the other things here uh, you've got a remote release Fletcher launcher you've got a fixed medium and a turreted medium um, this weapon again is pretty useless it was somewhat useful when it first got added and then um, Frontier Development sort of rebalanced it and basically made it a complete waste of time and then all the rest are all so you got uh, well they're all shot cannons you got fixed uh, large medium and small turreted large medium and small and gimbaled large medium and small um, and the shot cannon is a pretty useful weapon the only reason I don't use it is that uh, like everything else from uh, the technology brokers you can't engineer it and although say I think it is quite handy and if you can get the aim right it can be pretty fucking devastating um, but I would like to be able to engineer it because it does generate quite a bit of heat um, and I used to so I used to have it on a few ships but I, I found myself running out of ammo fairly quickly uh, so I could certainly do with um, you know uh, being able to engineer them for uh, greater ammo or at least like you know an efficient weapon and uh, reduce the, the heat output from it well, at the moment you can't engineer it so if, if you are particularly wanting to you know engineer weapons they may not be up your street all that much if you're not fussed about engineering weapons though they are definitely worth um, consideration you may well want to uh, take a look at those so that is uh, everything that you can get from the human and uh, Thargoid technology broker but let's be honest the main reason people go to technology brokers is Guardian uh, uh, modules and Guardian weapons um, basically if you plan to uh, go attacking um, Thargoid ships Thargoid interceptors uh, specifically you will want Guardian weapons the AX weapons that you can you can get without going through the tech broker so you know your, your AX uh, missile launcher your AX um, multi-cannon and the advanced multi-cannon and advanced uh, missile launcher they have their uses they don't begin to compare to the uh, the Guardian weapons so if you really do plan on taking on um, thyroid interceptors you need these so we'll start with uh, Guardian weapons first even though it's split into two separate categories on this uh, site you get them all from the same Guardian um, uh, technology broker and again uh, once you unlock them you can then buy them from any uh, station that has a Guardian technology broker it's not just at the station where you've unlocked it so with the Guardian weapons I've unlocked again I've unlocked all of these I've unlocked all of the Guardian modules as well Guardian Gauss cannon um, so you have uh, a fixed medium and a fixed small uh, the, the small does not require any uh, commodities it's only it only needs materials one Guardian weapon blueprint uh, 12 Guardian power conduits 12 Guardian wreckage components and 15 Guardian Sentinel weapon parts that's it no commodity so that one is pretty easy to unlock and it is useful I have it on um, my well, my first uh, AX Corvette I use it a, a hell of a lot with the fixed uh, Guardian Gauss cannon 
Uh, Guardian Weapon Blueprint Fragment, uh, one of those. 18 Guardian Power Cells, 20 Guardian Technology Components, 15 Manganese, and then you do need the uh, Commodity 6 Magnetic Emitter Coils. Those weapons are extremely handy. Um, and I would prioritize those and say, all right, that's that should be the first one you go for. They're not infallible. They generate a hell of a lot of heat. You really don't want to consider putting more than two of them on uh, any ship. Uh, you can't put more than four on any ship anyway. But uh, yeah, you don't. You really don't want to have more than two of these because otherwise you've got heat issues. If you're okay with handling heat, then yeah, go ahead and put three or four on. But uh, yeah, you're going to be managing heat throughout the entire battle if you do. Uh, but they are properly fucking useful. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend those. Next are the uh, Guardian Plasma Charges. So we have fixed large, fixed medium, fixed small, turreted large, medium and small. Um... I think they are of limited use. To be honest, I haven't used them all that much. I just couldn't get into them. They, they just didn't, they just don't work for me. But as I've said in countless videos, just because they don't work for me doesn't mean they are not going to work for anybody. You know, there are people out there who will swear by Guardian Plasma Charges, you know, so don't dismiss them. Uh, and again, uh, the small variants, so fixed small, turreted small, they don't need any um, uh, commodities to unlock those. So if you come to the site here, you can see, you know, go through the list and you'll see what uh, uh, materials they need. Uh, finally then is the shard cannon. So again, fixed large, fixed medium, fixed small, and then turreted large, medium and small. And again, the two small variants don't need any uh, commodities there. These are really useful. Um, particularly the large one. Um, that doesn't mean that, you know, the medium and the smalls should just be dismissed. But the large one, I think, is particularly handy. Uh, they work very much like uh, the frag cannons. Uh, which in particular means that uh, they're very short range. Um, okay, a, a, a Thargoid Interceptor is a big old target, but nevertheless, I don't really see the point in firing shard cannons if you're more than 1.5 kilometers out. In fact, that may even be stretching it really one kilometer out because the, the spread of your shots uh, means that some of it will be wasted. Also, because of how spread out they are, you're not going to get a huge amount of accuracy from them. So basically, just aim at the centre and blast away. And uh, well, actually, I'm going to be covering uh, Thargoids uh, in a possibly the next guide after this one. So I can go into that in a bit more detail. But yeah, shark cannons. Yeah. You haven't got the accuracy with them, but they pack a hefty punch. They do more damage than any other uh, Guardian weapon, but you need a lot of fragments to hit, so you don't really want to uh, yeah, be firing from too far away. So you're looking at like one kilometer and don't really want to be any further out than that. Um, once you're at something like two kilometers, if you're firing your shark cannons, you're basically wasting ammo. Uh, the few shots that hit it will have had so far the travel and yeah it's going to be so few of the uh, shards you fire that hit it it'll be a waste of fucking time and a waste of ammunition so yeah if, you, if you're two kilometers out don't use shark cannons at all so the fixed large requires one guardian weapon blueprint uh 20 guardian wreckage components 28 Guardian Technology Components, 20 Carbon, and 18 Microcontrollers. So, yeah, nothing like, you know, hugely difficult there to, to get. Um, and well worth it. Um, 
The other thing is, although I've been saying about using Guardian weapons to attack Thargoids with, you can also use them to attack regular ships. They are not AX only. You can use them against any, uh, um, no, any enemy ship. The reason why they're not really recommended for use against um, like human ships is that you can't engineer them, so their damage is good, but not great. Um, if you, you know, if you have any of the standard uh, weaponry, and you've engineered it, it's going to do far more damage than any of these will against uh, uh, human ships. So although they can be used against everything. I just use them in AX uh, vessels. So, yeah. So anyway, that's your uh, Guardian weapons. Finally, the Guardian modules. And uh, like I say, you unlock these from the same tech broker as Guardian weapons. You haven't got to go anywhere special. So uh, the first one here at the Guardian module is always the first one that everyone goes for, and understandably so. Guardian FSD booster. Uh, if you're starting out, um, then you know you, you've got a, you've only got the one ship. You want to make sure that you know, the, the the jump range is as good as you can possibly get. That's where this thing comes in. So for this one, uh, Guardian module blueprint fragment, one of those. 21 Guardian power cells, 21 Guardian technology components, 24 focus crystals, and 8 HN shock mounts. That's the uh, commodity. And then you'll unlock that. Um, they're available in class 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The class 5 adds, I think it's 10.5 light years to your, your current uh, maximum range. I think the bottom one, the class 1, adds six light years so they all certainly have their uses um but it's more a, a module that you're going to be using when you're just starting off um i've got so i've got 47 ships in my fleet um and i've been getting rid of fsd boosters from a lot of them um i think over the the past uh well, certainly since I got my fleet carrier, I've removed FSD boosters from 14 of them. So, yeah, it's great to start off with, but you will eventually get to the point where you don't really need them anymore. So, don't be too reliant on them. And obviously, in, in on some ships like um, exploration ships, if you want to get you know cover a fair you know a hefty old distance as quickly as possible they're still going to be invaluable then so so yeah they're always going to have their uses but not for every ship um next is guardian hull reinforcement this is very handy so you remember what i was saying about the uh meta alloy hull reinforcement in the um human and thargoid uh uh, technology broker there. Well, the Guardian hull reinforcement does pretty much the same thing, except the hull reinforcement is slightly stronger, and the caustic resistance is is better. Uh, with a Guardian hull reinforcement, you've got five percent caustic resistance, not three percent. The downside is that the Guardian one requires uh, power. So it is going to be a, a drain on your uh, power supply. So if you haven't got the power supply or the, the power available, that's when the uh, the meta alloy version comes in as a good backup. And that's what I meant about, you know, don't dismiss it. It's certainly useful. Um, and yeah, its usefulness is as, you know, an unpowered um, backup if you, you know, for the, uh, the Guardian hole reinforcement. So this needs one Guardian module uh, blueprint fragment, uh, 21 Guardian wreckage components, 16 pattern beta obelisk data, 16 pattern gamma op obelisk data, and then the uh, commodity is 12 reinforced mounting plates. They are very useful, to put it mildly. Um, yeah, 
well worth getting. Um, which is more than I can say for the next one. Uh, Guardian Hybrid Power Distributor. So this thing, um, well, I won't go through uh, the requirements. You can, so you can come through, come to this site and uh, check all of the uh, requirements. And the fact that you know, if, if they're unlocked and you go to a tech broker, it will give you the list of the, t of the materials and that it needs anyway. But um, the Guardian Hybrid Power Distributor, um, yeah, I'm not a fan. Um, the amount of power that it makes available uh, is a lot lower than the standard. Um, they're available in all classes from uh, 1 to 8. But they do recharge a lot faster. But again, if you've got, say, for example, uh, an A-rated, say you've got a, say you've got a 6A or a 7A um, uh, distributor, once you've modded it, you can make it work far better than this Guardian Hybrid one. So I guess it's handy if you've not got... Um, you know, the uh, engineering unlocked to do the uh, you know, your distributor, which is unlikely because I mean, it, the dweller will do um, distributors at the grade five, and he's one of the first uh, engineers that you unlock. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's very unlikely that that uh, will, will crop up. Um, this is just my opinion. I know there are players out there who swear by them, but uh, I'm not one of them. Next is Guardian Module Reinforcement. This is another one which is quite handy. Um, so with these, uh, again, like the whole reinforcement, it does require power from the power plant. But uh, yeah, it, it works better than the standard uh, module reinforcement. Uh, I can't remember if it provides caustic resistance to your modules. I don't think it does. But it does work better than, than the standard module reinforcement. And seeing as you can't mod the standard uh, reinforcement anyway, uh, the module reinforcement, you can't engineer it. So if you've got this unlocked and you've got the power uh, available, you might as well stick the Guardian one in there. So yeah, that is certainly useful. Next is the Guardian power plant. Now this suffers from the same thing as the uh, Guardian hybrid power distributor. Although not quite as bad. Um, it has greater mass than the... Uh, uh, the, the standard uh, human uh, power plant. Again, it's available in all classes, uh, you know, one to eight. It's only rate available as an A-rated part. That also applies to the uh, the, the distributor. Uh, yeah, so they have greater uh, mass. They will produce more power than an, uh, a power plant that hasn't been engineered. But you can engineer your power plant if you overcharge it to produce far more power than the, the Guardian one will. Um, I can't remember if it runs slightly hotter or slightly cooler, but uh, it's one or the other. I suppose it would be handy to know which, but uh, I only tried them once when, I, when they first came, you know, were made available. No, I wasn't that impressed. Um... One thing though is if you have a Guardian power plant and a Guardian power distributor together, uh, you get a bonus, I think it's 5% um, from the power plant, and I think it also improves uh, an aspect of your power distributor, though don't ask me what. Um, so, but even then, I still don't think it's as good as, you know, having the regular distributor and regular power plant so once you've engineered those two far better than the guardian ones next one for me is the most useful of the guardian modules and that is the guardian shield reinforcement so um 
it does pretty much what it uh, you know what it says. It will add to your shield strength, and unlike uh, the uh, shield boosters that you put on the utility mounts, these things will uh, add just sheer numbers, not a uh, percentage. Uh, they're available in class one to five. Uh, they say so they do use power and they do use a fair bit, but not as much as a Guardian FSD booster does. So it's you know it's not a, a massive drain, but uh, in combat specific ships where you know you're not going to be using your internal modules for a hell of a lot, slap some of these in away you go um yeah they really do make a difference to your shield strength so they are really handy so the last three are the guardian ship launch fighters uh, for for these uh you need a uh guardian uh starship uh, blueprint fragment or guardian vessel uh, blueprint i think it's, it's called in the game so to unlock all, you know, to unlock these things, obviously you need one Guardian uh, Blueprint. I think uh, they all require exactly the same materials. So 25 Guardian Power Cells, 26 Pattern uh, Epsilon Obelisk Data, 18 Pattern Beta Obelisk Data, and 25 Guardian Technology Components. Uh, the difference is the, uh, the, the weaponry that they have. Now, personally, I think they're fucking useless. Uh, I mean, I don't like ship launch fighters anyway. I don't use them. I, I think they're pointless. Um, and the Guardian ships, okay, they have AX weaponry. So, well, actually, no, they, they, they have Guardian weaponry. So, they will do damage to... Uh, uh, you know, any Thargoid ships that you may be going up against. But other than that, I mean, they're weaker and they're more fragile than the human ship launch fighters. But obviously, uh, the human uh, designed ships, their weapons won't do anything against uh, interceptors. At least with these three, they will do something for the five seconds that they're actually still alive. Um... Yeah, I, I'm probably not the best one to uh, uh, talk about uh, Guardian uh, ship launch fighters because I just think they are pointless. So you probably need the uh, opinion of someone who uses them rather than my one. So that's everything you can unlock. Guardian modules, Guardian weapons and human, well, modules and weapons. Um, so all you simply do take it to uh, the, the tech broker at whatever station make sure you, you know at least got some idea as to whether or not that tech broker is going to be a guardian or a human uh, tech broker take them there uh, give them the uh, materials and um, commodity that they uh, ask for that will then unlock uh, the particular module or weapon and then you can go to the uh, outfitting of any uh, space station that has the specific uh, tech broker and you can buy these weapons just as you would any regular weapon so yeah that is the tech brokers and uh, yeah that's covered those pretty you know <laughs> pretty much well, certainly as best as I can and so I've unlocked everything so I can't really show it to you in game so that leaves the last uh, use for um, materials and it is by far the most important one and that is engineers now to uh, demonstrate those I'm going to have to do a bit of in-game and a bit more on uh, Inara here. So we'll do another jump cut and uh, we'll actually be back in game this time. Won't that be exciting?
<clears throat> right, so, uh, engineers. Uh, this one probably takes a bit more explaining than uh, either of the two previous uh, uses for materials. But, as I said, this is the most important one by a distance. Because, okay, you've got, you know, your, yourself a, a really decent, you know, a big old powerful ship, such as the mighty adder that I'm <laughs> currently in. <laughs> um, and you've fully A-rated it and everything else. And you may be thinking, right, this is as good as it gets. No, it isn't. It's not even close. Uh, <coughs> we'll start by addressing something, which is that there are players out there who just simply refuse to use engineers. And, and their reasoning is that it's tedious. Um, some aspects of it are. But the benefits that you get from it far outweigh uh, the tedious nature that some parts of uh, engineering has. The most tedious part of all is actually uh, gaining access to a particular engineer in the first place. Of course, once you've done that, you haven't got to go through all that again. So it, it, it's a one-off. So this whole business of, no, I'm not going to use engineers because it's tedious and all this, uh, frankly, is bollocks. Um, there's really no reason not to do it. Uh, you know, it's, it is the number one reason why, um, materials are in the game. I mean, there are a huge amount of materials that are used for nothing else but engineering. So if you're gathering materials, but then not doing engineering, well, what's the fucking point of having them? Um, so... Yeah, uh, the, the whole business of, oh no, I'm not going to do engineering, it's not worth it, it's too tedious, and you know, yeah, bullshit. It is worth doing. It makes a huge difference to your ship. So, if we go into our, uh, whatever you call this panel, um, yeah, uh, you'll see there a section, Engineers. So, select that, and uh, you'll get a list now, obviously I've unlocked all of the engineers, uh, so I'm going to have all of them here. But what you'll get is, um, at the top, you'll have the engineers that you've been either, you've either got access with, or you've received an invite from them, or you have discovered them. Um, there are 25 in total. Um, the chances are the first engineer you're going to hear from is, uh, uh, where's she gone? Here we are, Felicity Farsia. Now she's in the Desiat system. Um, and she engineers quite a bit, but um, most of it is just getting you started. Now, that does not mean that, you know, oh, it's not worth bothering with then if, you know, the only uh, engineering she'll do is just to, to get you going. A lot of the time, not every time, but a lot of the time, uh, just having uh, a module engineered to grade one of whichever, um, you know, engineering you want, is as big, a, you know, will provide as big a difference as the difference between grade one and grade five. So the difference between unmodded and grade one is still significant and is still worth doing. So Felicity Fire Series in the yeah, Desiat system. A word of advice if you are new to the game, um, and even if you're not new to the game actually, don't go to Desiat if you're playing in open. Go there in either solo or in a private group. Um, Desiat is probably the number one location for griefers. The place is crawling with griefer cunts or gankers, whatever you want to call them. They're all absolute fucking wankers. And they are there purely to piss people off. Um, 
they will be in extremely large, extremely powerful and very heavily engineered ships. And if you're new to the game and you're just going into Desiat, the chances are you're in a comparatively small ship that has no engineering whatsoever. That's their idea of a challenge. You see. They're, they're that, you know, obviously that fucking shit at the game themselves that their idea of you know, taking on another player is to be in a huge, massively, uh, you know, powerful, massively engineered ship and take on newcomers who are in smaller ships that haven't had any engineering of any kind. Uh, yeah, that's as close to a challenge as they're willing to go. So, yeah, if you're going to Desiat, go in solo or go in the private group. Yeah, you know, just ignore the whole, uh, yeah, you know, the whole fucking grief and cunts. Anyway, get us back on track. Now, like all engineers, once you have uh, learned about uh, the location of uh, Farsia, you have to reach um, a certain sort of. Uh, so uh, a certain requirement before you actually get the invite so you'll discover their whereabouts but they won't invite you to uh, actually visit them until you reach the, a certain requirement with Farseer it's uh, yeah because your pilots federation exploration uh, rank is scout or higher very easy to reach uh, so once you've uh, received the invite you've then got to uh, carry out an initial contract and once you've done that you can then start doing uh, the engineering with them so with Farsia <coughs> the initial contract is to provide a unit of meta alloys not difficult um, but then it's hardly surprising she's nearly always as I say the first engineer that people visit So you give her the, the uh, meta alloy and then all of your uh, engineering options become available. Now I am, uh, so I'm on my carrier and we've moved to beta 3 uh, to Kani and we are orbiting uh, uh, a moon uh, 2BA. And on this moon there is this base here, the beach, and that is where another engineer is. This is uh, the base of the Sarge, <laughs> as possibly the shittiest name of all the engineers, but nevertheless, he's one that I need to use, um, <clears throat> because I need to do some engineering to uh, one aspect of uh, my uh, almighty adder, and uh, he's the one to go to for that. So, let's head on over. As you can see, the uh, the view through uh, the cockpit of the Adder is seriously obscured. It's the most obscured in the game uh, by a distance. All right, just for a change, it looks like the beach is actually in uh, darkness. It's on the uh, night side, so we'll need to use the old uh, night vision to land. Uh, this planetoid is very, very small and I think I'm coming in too fast. I might get away with it.
Now the layout of the Sarge's base is the most awkward of all of the engineers so if you see this one you, you, know, you think it's going to be typical of what all the engineers bases are like no don't worry about it this is the most awkward one right, let's request docking okay Zordon Peterson Lima uniform kilo flight control online Welcome, Commander. Request docking permission if you wish to land. The most granted. Proceed to landing pad zero one. The most awkward pads are if you're in a large ship because they are all right down the bottom. You got to manoeuvre around all of these uh, like structures up here in order to get to your landing pad. Landing oh, what the fucking hell did I do that for? Right, so we're down. Landing operation complete. Commence system shutdown. Welcome, Commander. Okay, so um, what you're going to see here, this applies to every engineer. So you've got the option here, engineers workshop. So you head there, and right, so you'll have modify your module. Um, Actually, no, if it's the first time you've come uh, here, the first thing you'll do, it will all be on this side, is to submit whatever it is that you need to give them uh, to complete the first, or uh, the initial contract. Once that is done, you then get this display. So, when you have modify your module uh, selected, uh, the list here will contain everything that is fitted to your ship that the particular engineers whose base you're at will engineer, you know, for you. So in this case, it is only cannons. Um, the good thing is that the Sarge uh, engineers cannons to grade five. Grade five is the highest you can uh, uh, get them. If you select browse all, you can then check out all of the uh, items that he will engineer. So it does does cannons to grade 5, uh, fuel transfer limpets to grade 5, railguns to grade 3, and prospector, hatchbreaker, and collector limpets to grade 5. Yeah, but cannons the only things I've got. So you select that one, you then select which cannon, or which, whatever one it is, that you want to do. And it takes you to this screen here. So here you get uh, the options to, um, you know, what, rather what engineering options are available to you. So you can have efficient weapon. You can click on all of the various grades to see what it will do, and also check like the costs. Um, efficient weapon is certainly useful in some cases, but for cannons, no, it's a bit pointless really. High capacity magazine. Now you notice I've got these symbols here. That indicates that I've actually got this um, particular uh, engineering pinned. Um, but yeah, I don't really want this one pinned because high capacity magazine does pretty much as you would imagine. It increases your ammunition and your uh, ammo clip size. Um, also will increase your, your damage per second and your rate of fire but uh, a lot of the engineering options do have negative effects in this case the mass is increased and the power draw is increased They're really not that bad a lot of the time the negatives um, are really not worth worrying about the positives that you get from it far outweigh them I mean the good thing about an efficient weapon no negatives at all. It's improvements right across the board. It's just that they're very general improvements uh, a lot of the time. However, <coughs> distribute the draw. If you take it up to grade 5, up to minus 45% taken off the uh, uh, distributor draw. And as far as thermal load, you can have that, uh, yeah, up to 60% reduction. Which is great if you've got uh, weapons that have high heat output and high, uh, you know, distributor drain 
but cannons, <laughs> no, for either of those. So next is lightweight mount. Um, so, you know, your integrity is reduced, but your mass is reduced. I mean, if you're going all the way up to grade 5, your mass is reduced by 90%. Power draw also gets reduced by 40% and distributed draw by minus 35%. So if you are using a lot of power, it could be worth uh, uh, consideration. No, it's not one that interests me. Long range. This is one that a lot of people swear by. Personally, I'm not a big fan of long range. I don't use it very often. But, I mean, if you go all the way up to grade 5 with this... Obviously, this is just uh, with, with uh, uh, the cannons in mind. But your range is doubled, so you have a 700 meter range. And also, your damage fall off is brought right the way up to exactly the same as your maximum range. So, you are going to do, uh, you know, the highest damage level, no matter where you hit the thing, whether it's 7 metres in front of you or 7,000 metres you know, in front, the damage is still going to be uh, the highest. And that is the reason why so many people swear by long range. Uh, shot speed is also uh, increased so that uh, when you're firing at 7,000 metres, um, the, you know, the shot you fired is going to reach uh, the target at, uh, in the same amount of time that it would have normally taken to reach the initial three and a half thousand meters that uh, the cannon range was before modification. Drawbacks, mass is increased, again not that big a deal. Power draw is increased but only by 15%. So, you know what, that is not a bad modification to fit the cannons at all. The more I was talking about it, the more I thought, you know what, that don't look too bad. But no, I, I, I've got one in mind. Um, we'll skip overcharge for the moment, because that's the one I'm planning to do. Next is rapid fire. Now, if we look at rapid fire on grade 5, um, damage per second, well, it's gone up quite significantly. Unmodded, 16.99. Modded, 28.83. But your damage does get slightly reduced, because otherwise it would be overpowered. Um, so I can sort of see why they would do that. It also introduces jitter, um, 0 0.5 degrees, it's not terrible, so you know, you can easily live with it. Uh, distributor draw is uh, reduced, 35%. And your reload time is reduced 65%, that's not bad. But here's the thing, your rate of fire, okay, it's reduced, or yeah, your rate is actually increased, 78.57%. But it's a difference of being able to fire, uh, you know, 0.46 shots per second to 0.82 shots per second. It's still less than one shot per second. Um, some weapons can really make use of rapid fire. And and they do. They they really do. Cannons are most definitely not one. You look at those those figures there. You think that just looks like a total waste of time. Um, short range blaster. It pretty much does what you would expect. So your range is uh, decreased by fifty percent. So your maximum range is now one thousand seven hundred and fifty. But it means the damage that you do is um, increased significantly, 75%. So damage and damage per second have gone up considerably. Unfortunately, so is your thermal load, increased by 40%. But the thermal load from uh, cannons is not very much. So it's it has its uses. Sturdy mount is one that I almost never bother with. The drawback is the mass is increased, it's doubled. Again, not, not that big a deal. Uh, your integrity is increased significantly, uh, 300% at uh, grade 5. Uh, your chances of uh, armor piercing 
are increased significantly, 60%. Your thermal load is decreased, um, so you've got a 30% reduction in the thermal load. But again, with cannons, it's not that big a deal. The thermal load is low enough as it is. Um, increasing your integrity is fine if enemy ships are going to target it. But how many enemy ships are going to target your cannons or whatever weapon? Um, some modules, uh, you know, would benefit from things like a sturdy mount or the equivalent of sturdy mount, like reinforced or something. Cannons are not among them. And finally then, overcharged weapon. This is the one that I plan to fit to uh, my... Uh, uh, cannon here. So distributed draw is increased. Like I say, that's not a big deal. Uh, cannons don't use a hell of a lot of uh, uh, distributed draw anyway. Thermal load is increased only by 15%. It's already quite low. It's still pretty low even after that. Uh, damage uh, per second and damage are both increased. So damage is up to 62.69 uh, and damage per second is up to 28.89 so yeah it's pretty good I mean if you look at the short range blaster yes they're increased a lot more but um, yeah thermal load is up more You know what, <laughs> that short range blaster does look pretty good. Because let's face it, I'm in an adder. I am not going to be attacking from a long range. And besides which, 1750 metres. I mean, I never open fire until they are at least 1500. No, no I'm going to stick with the, the one I was going to do in the first place. So, um... Right, so we cho we've chosen overcharged weapon. So uh, for grade one, see here, all we need is nickel. Uh, costs are always one, um, so use one material per uh, roll. So click on generate modification. So yeah, it points out that uh, we're going to have these negative effects applied. That's fine. There we go. Now. Because I've been to uh, the Sarge on numerous occasions, you can see here, the Sarge Grade 5 access. So, yeah, I'm already at Grade 5 uh, with him, and that means that when I did that Grade 1 thing, it, bas it maxed it out in one go. If you are using an engineer for the first time, it's not going to max it out first go. It'll probably take two, maybe three clicks. But you don't really want to max it out, especially if you plan on doing, um, you know, in improving the grade. Once it gets to about 10 o'clock here on this dial, the next grade should then be available. And if you are at grade 1, once it reaches that point, your grade will go up from grade 1 access to grade 2. So, grade 2. So, for this, we need nickel still and conductive uh, components. So, grade 2 will increase damage uh, compared to stock by 40%. Obviously, damage per second, uh, the same amount. Uh, distributed draw and thermal load are worsened uh, again. But, I mean, look, you're, you're talking a difference with the distributed draw uh, going from 0 0.80 to 0 0.84. It's not that big a deal. So, we'll let the uh, first one there. And that's maxed that out again in one go. It doesn't always happen, even though I have grade 5 access. So, let's say, right, you're done, you know, 2, 3, you're up to um, 10 o'clock. So, you've got grade 3 available to you, and it will come up here, grade 3 access. So, now... Um, for this we need nickel again, conducted components again, and now electrochemical arrays. And this will increase damage to 55.31 and uh, damage per second up to 25.49. So this will now give us a 50% increase. 
So there's the first. Now you see, uh, that's only happened there, it moved to, to there to about like say seven o'clock. So the grade four option hasn't uh, been shown yet. So we need to do another one. Right, so that's got it up to around sort of 11 o'clock. And now we can see that the grade four option is open. So with grade four available there, you'll have grade four access showing there. Um, the only difference, as I say, be between having the access is, you know, the, the various grade of access. When engineers were first introduced, it was much more important than it is now. Now it's not that big a deal. It just means that if you're doing lower grade um, uh, modding, it takes less clicks and therefore using less materials to get it up to uh, the um, you know, either the, the max amount or to the amount where you can then select the next grade. So grade four. Uh, so this is using zinc, conductive ceramics and polymer capacitors. And this will increase damage up to 60%. Damage per second obviously it's the same. So again, distributed drawn and thermal load are worsened further. So we'll put that on. Now the grade fours and even more so the grade fives do take more clicks. Um, so okay, it's only just, but yet yeah, two, and that's got us uh, far enough to get to grade five. So by this point, you will have grade five access with your uh, engineer that you're using. Once you've done that, uh, you're at grade five. This is then a good time if you want to pin uh, the blueprint that you're doing, is to select it now. There we go. Now, once you've pinned a blueprint, when you are docked anywhere, um, including on a carrier, if you own one or if you're docked on anyone else's carrier, you can then access remote engineering and uh, you can engineer the, uh, you know, if you've got either this cannon here that you're doing or if you bought any other cannons, I can um, do the overcharged uh, weapon uh, engineering uh, on those. But if you do it remotely, not at the base, um, your grade doesn't increase. So say you've only got a grade 2 access, it means that you'll be able to max it up to grade 2, but you won't get grade 3, 4 or 5 available to you because you'll only have grade 2 access with the engineer. So there's no point, um, you know, pinning a, uh, a particular modification unless you have grade 5 access with that engineer. I mean, obviously, if it's a uh, an item that can't be... Um, engineered to grade 5, so say for example it will only go to grade 4, there's... <sighs> fucking hell. Alright, then you can, you know, even with grade 4 access, still pin it. No point waiting for it to go up to grade 5, because, you know, if you can only do it to grade 4, then, you know, grade 4 access is fine. There are some engineers that are like that, so... But anyway, so we now have grade 5 available. So this uses uh, zirconium, uh, conductive polymers, and modified embedded firmware. Uh, so grade 5s do take a few clicks. That's a pretty good first roll. So next one. And pretty good. Now that one is pretty good as well. So I've only done three. But already, right, so my damage is currently at 62.25 out of a possible maximum of 62.69. So if I was to upgrade this further, it's only going to improve this by 0.44. That's, that, you know, it can't improve it by any more than that. So uh, you do get a lot of players who will absolutely insist on maxing out uh, their grade 5. But a lot of the time it's just not worth it because you're going to use an awful lot of materials getting it from here to, to here maxed out. I mean I'll do uh, a couple more to show you. So here's the next one. 
<laughs> of course, it then does a, a relatively good one there. Um, I'll do one more. Yeah, you see now that one there, that did next to fuck all. Um, but it has used up one of each of these uh, materials here. And it could well be another one, it could even be another two to get it to that, that final little bit. But now we're talking a difference of 0 0.04. Is it really worth it? No. So, you know, don't worry about maxing it out when you're at grade 5. If, if you know, the, the dial is sort of around here, that's absolutely good enough. So we've got uh, our um, overcharged weapon done. Uh, it's not maxed out, but it is, you know, as far as damage per second, it's 0 0.02 off the max. And, yeah, the actual damage one is 0 0.04 off uh, the max. I can live with that. Now, with um, quite a few uh, of the um, modules that you can engineer, as well as doing um, the actual original modification, there's also this option here, experimental effect. Now, with experimental effects, you have to be at the engineer's base. You can't do this through remote. So you've got to land at the engineer's base to uh, fit one of these. So you select that. And you have various options. So with the cannons, you have quite a few options indeed. So oversize will increase damage per second and damage further. It also increases power draw. So uh, you can get the, uh, the attributes there, how they're affected. And then the cost. Uh, costs for um, experimentals are... You know, they're not just one of... Uh, each um, material like the actual uh, engineering, the actual mod itself is. Um, but you do just click it on, click it the one time and it's applied. So oversize yep, uses mechanical scrap, mechanical components and ruthenium. Uh, flow controls, so you know if you've got power issues you want to reduce the uh, power draw. There you go. Double brace increases the integrity. Strip down reduces mass. Um, most uh, weapons have these four options uh, available to you. Now we start getting to the more interesting ones. So auto loader, an experimental upgrade that automatically reloads the weapon even when firing. Quite handy, um, but it's not for me. Or at least not for this ship. There isn't really an engineer, uh, you know, an, an engineering modification or uh, an experimental that is like, you know, one case fits all. Depending on your ship loadout or the way you play it, um, you know, there's a good chance that uh, the engineering you do will be totally different to uh, what I'm I'm doing here. The next is uh, Smart Rounds, a uh, friend or foe targeting upgrade that causes rounds to self-destruct before damaging ships that are not currently targeted. In other words, you don't accidentally hit friendlies and get, you know, fines for it. Sounds like it would be quite handy, but I also find that um, if they're going to hit an enemy ship, because you haven't actually got that target selected, they'll do the same then. So... Yeah, I'm a bit iffy about smart rounds. I I don't bother using it. Force shell. <laughs> now this is the one that I have on uh, a few of my ships, which I use in um, resource extraction sites. So uh, yeah, force shell, a modification to allow firing of low explosive shells designed to generate a propelling blast. Strikes to a target are capable of forcing ships off course at the cost of shot accuracy. Uh, actually, the accuracy is fine. It is the shot speed that's uh, affected. It is slowed by quite a bit, but, you know, if you're accurate enough with your shots, you know, it's not that big a deal. So this, uh, this one, uh, five mechanical scrap, five zinc, three phase alloys, three heat conduction wiring. But yeah, this one I've used on several ships, um, 
and I'm going to use it on this one as well. So there you go, that has now been uh, fitted. We'll just go through the other ones here. So high yield shell. Um, oh yeah, actually I'll, I'll come at what I was going to say in a sec. Um, this one it converts a portion of damage to explosive. So this is a good one if you are attacking internal modules. I've got a few um, ships with cannons that have that uh, fitted as well. Then the uh, dispersal field. Uh, if you hit the target, it basically sends the gimbal and turreted weapons a bit haywire, a bit like uh, if you've launched chaff, so they can't um, get their, you know, they, they won't be able to, to hit you too good. Obviously, it's only a temporary thing. Uh, this one, Thermal Cascade, I've got this fitted to a few uh, of my ships with cannons as well. Um, so this interacts with shields on detonation, generating significant heat on the target, so basically you can make the ship overheat. And then finally, multi-servos, damage per second and rate of fire is increased, power draw is increased. Um, yeah, so you go, increasing your rate of fire. Now you can only fit one experimental. So yeah, I've got the four shell. Likewise, uh, with any module or weapon, you can only fit one um, engineering modification. So I've got overcharge fitted but I can't have overcharged and then fit rapid fire and then fit short range blast no it's, it's just one of them so one um, engineering modification and one experimental and that is it that, sh that uh, module is now uh, fully engineered if we take a look at uh, the uh, stats, there we go. Overcharged weapon with force shell. So, which engineers do what? And how easy is it to uh, access them? Well, the best way to show you that is to go back to Inara. So we will do uh, a jump cut and uh, yeah, we'll uh, see what Inara has to say about it all. Right, so here we are back on Inara and this is the page that uh, gives you all the details that you need about uh, the engineers. So there are 25 in total, and uh, this one has them arranged in the order that, uh, or more or less in the order that you will uh, gain access to them. So the one I detailed first was uh, Felicity Farcia here, and with all of them, uh, it uh, lists all of the uh, modules and weapons that they will engineer and the ones written in blue are the ones that they will engineer up to grade 5 which is uh, the, you know, the highest that uh, you can engineer them to so if you fast here here so again it has all of the um, information how to discover it uh, public data sources meeting requirements gain exploration rank scout or higher we know that and then to actually unlock them and be able to use um, their uh, engineering provide one unit of meta alloys so this one is easy one thing I forgot to mention when I was uh, at the engineer base is you can also improve your reputation with engineers by either selling exploration data or providing, uh, you know, cashing in combat bonds or bounties. They don't always have those um, you know, options there. Uh, but, you know, yeah, if you've got combat bonds in that system or bounties from, from that system and they give you the chance to hand it in, your reputation will increase without using engineers to, um, you yeah, know, without using materials, rather engineering stuff. It's not as useful as it used to be. 
it used to be a great way of uh, um, being able to skip past certain uh, engineering grades because when it was first added some grades I can't remember if it was grade 2 or grade 3 you had to provide a commodity as well uh, I think uh, a lot of time it was platinum um, so uh, whichever one that was that would be when I then started handing in either exploration data or handing in uh, combat bonds uh, so I could skip past that and not have to um, use platinum with it I'll say they don't do that anymore so you know don't worry about that just do the engineering get yourself up to uh, grade 5 that way it's the quickest way the easiest way and you got the benefits of you know whatever the engineering is so yeah so with Felicity Farcia She'll do your frame shift drive up to grade five, uh, 5, so maxed. Now, although I said that, you know, there isn't any, uh, you know, one mod suits all, I think with frame shift drive, that is the exception. Your options are, you can have a shielded, so your frame shift drive is better protected. You can have faster boot sequence which is not actually speeding up how fast uh, the frame shift drive is engaged. It's if the frame shift drive is, is powered down and you uh, power it up again, it speeds up that sequence. I find that utterly pointless. And the third option is increased range, increasing your jump range. This will be a real surprise. That's the one everybody goes for, and it's no surprise. So you click on it, and it then tells you, you know, the crafting costs, and blah, 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 which engineers will do that particular one, uh, the actual modifying itself, what it does. So increased range will always increase your power draw. It decreases your integrity, it increases the mass of the frame shift drive, but it uh, significantly increases the optimal, uh, optimal mass that uh, the frame shift drive can shift and therefore increases your jump range. <laughs> that is the one everybody does. Uh, and if you scroll down, it also gives you a list of uh, the experimental effects that are available for it. But she'll also do a detailed surface scanner to grade 3. Friendship drive interdictor, only grade 1, but like I say, a lot of the time, grade, you know, the difference between unmodded and grade 1 is as great as the difference between grade 1 and grade 5. So, it's still worth doing. Power plant. Again, only grade one, still worth doing. Uh, sensors to grade three. Shield boosters, again, only grade one. And thrusters up to grade three. So she's a good sort of like all rounder to get you started off. But obviously, the fact that she does uh, grade five frame shift drive, very handy. So yeah, she's usually the first one uh, people use. And the thing is, she does make Elvira Martuk here, who is another one who is quite uh, uh, an early one to, to discover. Again, how to discover public, public knowledge. Meeting requirements, attain a maximum distance from your uh, starting location of at least 300 light years. Far from difficult to do. And then the unlock requirements is to provide three units of Soontil relics. They are a rare uh, commodity. I can't remember what system they're in, but uh, a wild guess it's the Soontil system. So that's sort of like encyclopedic knowledge that I keep up here, you know. But you look at what she does. Uh, thrusters to grade two. Well, Farseer doesn't to grade three. Frame shift drive up to grade five. So exactly the same as Farseer. So you're already starting to think, mm, what's the point of this one? But she will also do shield cell banks. Um, only grade one, but it is a significant difference. And shield generator up to grade three. Now being able to uh, improve your shield generator is surely worth uh, doing. So 
Elvira Martuk is certainly worth uh, visiting. Also mentions on here uh, which system they're in. Um, so yeah, no problem. Uh, another early one that you'll encounter actually will do uh, Todd the Blaster McQueen. Uh, so he is a common knowledge um, to discover him. Uh, meeting requirements is earn more than 15 bounty vouchers. Not hard at all. Um, and to unlock him, you just pay him 100,000 credits worth of bounty vouchers. Because it's bounty vouchers, you do have to get them from the system he's in. He's in Wolf 397. But uh, that's one ship. Yeah. <laughs> um... And what does he do? Well, he does cannons to grade 2, fragment cannons to grade 3, but the important ones, he does multi cannons to grade 5, and rail guns to grade 5. So, yeah, he's all about your weapons, but yeah, grade 5 modding on multi cannons and rail guns. Very handy. Uh, Right, we'll do uh, Liz Ryder next. So she's in the Eurybia system. How to discover public sources. Meeting requirements is to gain cordial or friendly status with Eurybia Blue Mafia. Uh, so that's one of the uh, minor factions in Eurybia. So you may have to go into uh, the Eurybia system, do a few missions for uh, that minor faction to get your, your status uh, up with them. Those meeting requirements have actually been changed because initially it was that you had to be allied with them. Um, and that did take some doing, but uh, you know, I did manage it and now they've dropped it. So, I mean, if, if it's down to only needing to be cordial, two missions at most will get you that. So, yeah, no problem. Unlock requirements is to provide 200 units of landmines. That's a lot. And they are a bit of a pain in the ass to get, but you know, worth it. So she will do whole reinforcement packages only at the grade one, but it's it's an improvement. Armor, that armor that's your bulkheads, uh, and she'll do those to grade one. Uh, mine launcher to grade three. Missile racks, uh, that's dumbfire missile rack but also seeker missile rack and torpedo pylons all to grade five so if you use missiles she's certainly handy if you are still just starting off though those uh whole reinforcement and armor uh improvements are worth doing may only be grade one but it's, it's still not bad and then finally of the ones that uh, you initially start off uh, knowing about is I think the most useful of the lot. Uh, the Dweller, who's in the Weird system. Um, so how to discover? Common knowledge. Uh, meeting requirements is to deal with at least five black markets. So you need to do a bit of smuggling. So you uh, smuggle uh, goods and sell them on the black market in five uh, different stations. Doesn't have to be five systems. I mean, if, they, if you find a system that has five, like, docking stations or outposts or whatever, and they all have black markets, you sell one item to all five of those, that's good enough. The unlock requirement, you have to pay him half a million. That's it. Um, once you've done that, he will then start engineering for you. And his ones really do make a difference. Um, beam lasers to grade three. Uh Okay, it's not maxed, but believe me, that is fucking useful. Burst lasers to grade 3. Again, okay, not maxed, but still properly useful. Power distributors to grade 5. Very useful. Uh, pulse lasers to grade 4. So not quite maxed, but it's still a significant improvement. Um, so yeah, he is definitely one that uh, you will want to you know, be able to use sooner rather than later so those five are the ones that are all uh, common knowledge so how do you get access to all these other ones here well 
by doing engineering with all of these five, once you get uh, your um, access level to, it's between three and four, so let's say halfway between grades three and four, you will then receive a notification that uh, you've um, discovered, and sometimes it will even not just a discovered, but also an invite from the next one down in uh, in like the line. So let's say uh, Felicity Farsia, she will unlock uh, access to Yuri Ishmark. Um, He's not the most useful of engineers, but he's another one of those where you kind of have to deal with him, just so that you know once you've got his um, uh, grade access to again between halfway between three and four, he will access the next one. Um, so he un unlocks access to Colonel Brist Decker and the Sarge, who was the. Uh, um, engineer that I uh, visited in uh, the video just now um, and as far as that particular uh, column goes the Sarge is the last one so using uh, Brist Decker or the Sarge won't unlock any other engineers so that's uh, Farseer there um, now with Martuk uh, once you've got uh, you access to let's let's call it three and a half. So once you got uh, the you know three and a half access, she will unlock uh, or you know, invites to Mel Brandon and Zachariah Nemo and Marco Quent. So she unlocks uh, access to three of them. Now Mel Brandon is one of four engineers who's out around Colonia space, so he's a long old way from where you are. He's, he's about twenty-two thousand light years away, so you're not likely to be rushing off to see him straight away. But you can get any of uh, these un ones that have just been unlocked here. If you get any one of those to grade three and a half, you will then unlock access to the next lot who uh, are Professor Palin, Laurie Jameson, and Chloe Sadesi. Um So, the Colonia engineers are all sort of, they do a whole slew of different ones. It's basically a, a more compact uh, version of the engineers that are in the main populated zone. Um, Zachariah Nemo here, who uh, you will unlock through Martuk. He will do fragment cannons up to grade 5. He also does multi cannons up to grade 3. And he also gets you underway with um, plasma accelerators. He will do those to grade 2. So he is certainly useful. Grade 5 multi cannon, uh, grade 5 fragment cannons, plasma accelerators started. Yeah, he's, he's certainly handy. Marco Quint, on the other hand, is not so useful. He'll do power plants up to grade 4. So, you know, you've got a sort of reason for, for visiting him uh, straight off. But he does power distributors up to grade 3. Well, if you've unlocked the dweller, <laughs> that makes that pretty superfluous. The other thing is, he is in Sirius. And you need a permit to go to Sirius. So, if you haven't got the Sirius permit, yeah, you're not going to visit him anytime soon. Um... Alright, so uh, Todd the Blaster McQueen, he will unlock uh, access to Petra Omanova, who is one of the uh, Colonia regions. And he will also unlock access to Celine Jean. Uh, now, she is in the uh, Cux system, but she will do whole reinforcement packages and armor bulkhead upgrades, both to grade 5. Very handy indeed. Um, and once you've got her to uh, grade uh, three and a half, she unlocks access to D.D. Vatterman and Bill Turner. Now, D.D. Vatterman does shield boosters to grade five. Extremely handy. Uh, shield generators to grade three. While Bill Turner, I mean, he does quite a lot. 
Um, manifest scanner, kill warrant scanner, frame shift weight scanner, fuel scoop, auto field maintenance unit, refinery and life support all to grade 3. Detailed surface scanner and sensors to grade 5 and by far the reason why everyone uh, visits him. Plasma accelerators to grade 5. Absolutely useful. Unfortunately, he's in Alioth, which is another uh, permit system, but that is a hell of an incentive to get the Alioth uh, permit because he is extremely handy. Um, right, so uh, we'll do uh, Liz Ryder. So she unlocks uh, access to Etienne Dawn, who's another um, Colonial Region engineer. And here are Tani. Tani will do uh, power plants to grade 5. You don't need me to tell you how useful that is. Detailed surface scanners also to grade 5. Also does sensors to grade 3. I'm power distributor to grade 3. By the time you've unlocked access to her, those last two are pretty pointless. But the power plant to grade 5, yeah, that's the reason for, for wanting to unlock access to her. Now you get her up to uh, grade three and a half, and she unlocks access to Brew Tarquin and Tiana Fortune. Brew Tarquin is essential. He's in Wang, and he will engineer burst lasers, pulse lasers, and beam lasers all to grade five. What more do I need to say about that? Tiana Fortune. She does quite a lot to grade 5, but uh, nothing that is particularly vital. It's all stuff that's useful, but not essential. So grade 5, she will do frame shift weight scanner, kill warrant scanner, manifest scanner, collect Olympic controller, fuel transfer Olympic controller, hatch break Olympic controller, prospect Olympic controller, and sensors. And then grade 3, frame shift drive interdictor, and uh, detailed surface scanner. She's in Ashanar, another permit system. Um, so, actually, I didn't mention why, after you've uh, unlocked uh, or got either Nemo or Quent to three and a half. So, yeah, they unlock uh, access to Palin, Laurie Jameson, and Chloe Sadesi. Professor Palin, he's currently in ARC. Grade 5 thrusters. Uh, you know, that says quite enough. Frame shift drives to grade 3. By that time, utterly superfluous. But grade 5 uh, thruster engineering makes him vital. Laurie Jameson. She's in Shinrata Desra. So yeah, you need the permit for that. In other words, you need to be elite on at least one thing. She does sensors and detailed surface scanners to grade 5. Doesn't sound all that useful, and to be honest, there are a lot of other engineers that do those. So we'll do refinery to grade 4, fuel scoop to grade 4, auto field maintenance unit to grade 4, life support to grade 4, and then grade 3, friendship weight scanner, kill warrant scanner, manifest scanner, and grade 3, shield cell bank. Now, if you haven't been to... Uh, uh, Colonia or around like Colonia space this is where Laurie Jameson becomes not just useful but pretty much essential grade 4 life support is the highest you can do grade uh, life support engineering within uh, the, the main populated zone and likewise shield cell banks grade 3 that's the highest you can engineer uh, shield cell banks again while within the populated zone so just because they're not done to grade 5 doesn't mean they're no good. They are extremely useful. Um, so yeah, initially Laurie Jameson is pretty useful. The last one is Chloe Sadesi, who I really think is an utter waste of time. Uh, she's in Shenva, which is way out in the uh, uh, Witch Head Nebula. And she is a carbon copy of Professor Paling. Grade 5 thrusters, 
grade three friendship drive she even has exactly the same uh, requirements needed to discover her and has exactly the same uh, initial contracts you've got to fulfill a lot of people including me uh, thought that uh, she would be one where additional uh, engineering options would be added but she's been in the game for a while now and nothing so yeah not that important at the moment um i mean arc is easy to get to shenver is a pain in the ass to get to so yeah it's very unlikely you're ever going to actually bother using her so um finally then the dweller uh so once you've got him to three and a half he will unlock uh marsha hicks who is the fourth and final of the uh colonia uh engineers uh, and Lee Chung. Now he does shield boosters to grade 3. Useful if you haven't unlocked DD Vutterman down here yet. He will also do detailed surface scanner to grade 5, sensors to grade 5, and the reason for visiting him shield generators to grade 5. Nothing more needs to be said there. He is uh, extremely useful. Get him to. Um, Great, you know, is access to three and a half, and you unlock access to Ram Tar, who I don't think is all that useful, but has some benefits. So you'll do Hatchbreaker Olympic Controller to grade three, Prospector Fuel and Collector Olympic Controllers to grade four, and then grade five, uh, Chaff Launcher, Heat Sink Launcher, Point Defense, and Electronic Countermeasure. Mm. so that's all of the engineers now so if you want to uh check you know which um engineer you know what engineering they do what options are available for each module and how much of what particular material is needed uh and and also for their experimental effects yep inara here is is the place to go uh, it will tell you absolutely everything you need to know as far as uh, engineer locations and what they require. So, um, yeah, that's their locations, but I haven't quite finished yet, so uh, we'll head back to the game. All right, so yeah, we're back in the game. We are still in the uh, the deadly uh, death equals adder. Um, but I thought I'd show you that. And while I'm also here, I'll show you the uh, remote workshop. So this is where all of your pinned, um, you know the, the modifications that you've pinned um, they will all appear in this list only the uh, ones that apply to uh, you know your current ship will appear so you know if you've if you've not got cannons fitted for example then they won't be there but if you have other weapons fitted they will appear um, and yeah you just select them and then act like you do at the uh engineer and, and and click you know to generate modification but like i say you can't add experimentals uh, it even says there um experimental effects can only be applied at engineer workshop locations and it doesn't improve your uh like your grade or whatever with the uh you know your access level with the engineer so if you want to do uh say for example i've, I've already said this but we'll just just to be sure so you want to do grade five overcharging to your cannons but you've only got uh you know your uh, access level is at grade two with uh, the sarge you'll be able to do one max out two but you won't get access to three four and five so there's no point um, pinning anything until you've got their uh, access level at five. Um, and then, you know, yeah, pin it and use it 
whenever you like. But which ones do I suggest or recommend uh, pinning? Well, there are a few videos that show this. And to be honest, <laughs> showing you this, I think, only has like a limited use. It's uh, these are what work best for me, but that doesn't mean it's going to work best for everybody. Um, so, you know, use this, well, rather like everything else, I guess, in, in these videos. Use it as a guide, but don't take it as, you know, right, I, this is what I've got to do. No, you haven't got to do any of these. You know, these are just uh, suggestions. So, with the Sarge, as you've just seen, um, is uh, is uh, overcharged weapon. It was high capacity, but for a cannon, don't really need it. So yeah, I changed it to overcharged. And uh, actually, you can go through and see, you know, what you're going to need as far as uh, grades one, two, three, four, and five, and what they will do and everything else. So with Liz Ryder, I have got a uh, lightweight mount for uh, Seeker missiles uh, pinned. Marco Quent, I don't have anything pinned on him because I think he's fucking useless. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't offer anything that I can't get better somewhere else. Brist Decker. Now, I've got Grade 5 access with Brist Decker, but um, I've got a long range FSD interdictor uh, fitted with her. She does those to Grade 4. That is the maximum you can do with in, uh, FSD interdictors. There isn't a Grade 5 for those. So, there you go. Long range FSD interdictor with Brist Decker. Tiana Fortune has. Uh, Fast scan uh, for the uh, uh, yeah friendship weight scanner. So again, see all the uh, materials needed for that one. Laurie Jameson. Now I have lightweight uh, sensors um, with her. Now this is because of some of the other. Um, engineers that I've got access to and have pinned uh, engineering with. If you've not been to Colonia, then I wouldn't recommend pinning the, uh, yeah, the, the, the sensors with her. She does the best uh, life support and best shield cell bank um, uh, engineering of anyone within the main populated zone. Um, so you'll want to pin either of those, not the lightweight scanner. You'll see why I have done uh, in a few. So Zachary Nemo, uh, yeah, high capacity magazine for uh, frag cannons. So get those up to grade five. Uh, with the Dweller, no surprise, it's power distributor, and I've uh, yeah, it's weapon focused uh, power distributor with uh, him. Great fight there. Professor Palin, yeah, this will really surprise you. Oh, look, it's dirty drive tuning for our thrusters. So, yeah, up to grade five with those. Um, actually, uh, just, uh, that, that's just reminding me. Say, for example, you've been to uh, Professor Palin and you've done your dirty drive tuning up to grade five. But for whatever reason, you didn't uh, fit an experimental onto it. That doesn't mean you have to go back to Professor Palin. Um, you can fit an experimental um, at any time you like, as long as you have done at least some engineering. So, you know, you do one bit of engineering at grade one, that's enough. You can fit the engineering, uh, fit an experimental module then. Um, but also, yeah, you haven't got to go back to the engineer that uh, did the initial engineering in the first place. So if you know of another engineer that will also do dirty drive tuning, regardless of whether they will only do it to grade one, two, three, four, 
um, they will still fit that same experimental uh, module. So, for example, uh, you can uh, get yeah your dirty dry tuning up to grade five uh, with uh, Professor Palin, and then go to Felicity Farcia. You know she does them up to grade three, but she'll do the um, experimental. You get it fitted there. So. Uh, experimental modules after you've done uh, remote engineering uh, from either a docking station or a carrier. So carrying on, uh, Li Chung, no surprise, uh, it's uh, shield generators and it's thermal resistant shields that I've got uh, saved with him. So those up to grade five. Yuri Ishmark, um, he, yeah, it's uh, the surface scanners with him, so expanded probe scanning radius, that's the only engineering you can do on surface scanners, so yeah, up to grade 5 with those. Next, DD Vitamin, no surprise, it is shield boosters, um, I've pinned uh, heavy duty, but I actually use a lot of uh, heavy duty and resistance augmented. Oh, resistance augmented. The reason I've pinned this one is because I do uh, use more heavy duty. Because if I'm doing uh, an AX uh, ship, well, they're all going to be heavy duty. There's no point putting resistance uh, augmented boosters on a uh, you know a, a ship that's going to be going up against thargoids. Um, so yeah, that's the only reason why I went with heavy duty rather than resistance augmented. Again, grade fives are there. Brew Tarquin. Um, so he has, yeah, I've got uh, beam laser, efficient weapon pinned with uh, him. No surprise, really. Uh, Felicity Farcia, you know, this is a real, a real surprise here. Friendship drive, increased range. There you go, I bet you never thought it would be that, eh? Uh, Todd the Blaster McQueen, so I have uh, yeah, lightweight mount for rail guns uh, pinned with him there. Uh, Celine Jean. Uh, so, yeah, it's heavy duty hull reinforcements pinned with uh, her. It's a tricky one to choose whether you want hull reinforcements or the uh, bulkheads, you know, the armour uh, one pinned. But again, you'll see in a few minutes why I've got heavy duty hull re or why I've chosen the hull reinforcement anyway um, uh, to be uh, pinned with her. Then uh, Ramtar. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, the heatsink ammo capacity. Um, that is a very useful mod, to put it mildly. But um, personally, I think it's the only useful one he does. So yeah, it was a no-brainer for that one. Uh, Bill Turner is a bit of a no-brainer with this one. Yeah, efficient weapon for plasma accelerators. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there was no way it was going to be anything else. And then Hiratani is another no-brainer, uh, overcharged uh, power plants. So again, grade 5 for them. And then we've got a couple of blank ones. Elvira Martuk, um, the only thing she does at the grade 5 is friendship drives, which I've already got bookmarked with uh, Farseer here. Um, so there's no point bookmarking anything with her. Uh, Chloe Sadesi, as I was saying uh, when we were on the uh, Inara site, she is just a carbon copy of um, Professor Palin, except she's a lot further out, so she's utterly fucking useless at the moment. So you know, I've got nothing uh, pinned with her. And then these last four, these are the ones that are out in uh, around Colonia. So yeah, I have been out there and I have pinned. Um, uh, blueprints with all of uh, these four. So Marsha Hicks, I fucked up here. 
Um, so I've got Collect Olympic Controllers uh, Miscellaneous Lightweight. Um, she does multi cannons, but when I went out there, she only did them to grade four. I think that has since changed, and she now does them to grade five. If she does, well, I've got an exploration trip that I'm going to be starting around sort of like in in January. I'm almost certainly going to be going close to Colonia, so I may stop by there and change it. I think this is a waste. Collect Olympic controllers, lightweight. It's, it's a bit pointless, really. Etienne Dawn was an absolute no-brainer. Uh, life support, um, lightweight, and he will do them at grade 5. So you remember what I was saying about... Uh, uh, Laurie Jameson, she does the um, light wall. She'll do life support modding up to grade four, uh, which is extremely handy. But yeah, if you've been out to Colonia, there's someone out there who will do them to grade five. And he is the only engineer who will do uh, grade five modding to life support. So yeah, absolute no brainer there. Uh, life support was uh, bookmarked with him. Uh, then Mel Brandon, this is another one where it was an absolute no-brainer. Uh, Laurie Jameson will do shield cell banks up to uh, grade 3, which is the best you can do in uh, the uh, populated zone. Mel Brandon, shield cell banks, uh, specialised. He does them to grade 4. That's the highest you can do shield cell bank uh, modding to. There isn't a grade 5. Um, so, yeah, shield cell banks... At the best mods you could fit absolutely no way i was going to consider anything else and then petra Olmanova. she is the one where i've got the uh armor um uh, you know bulkheads uh bookmarks with so i've actually got uh yeah bulkheads and reinforcement packages both bookmarked so i didn't have to choose it was just yeah you know, you know Whichever one Celine Jean uh, does, or that I've got pinned, pinned the other one with uh, Olman over there. So, there you go, that's uh, the ones that I have pinned there, you know, the uh, blueprints that I've got pinned with the engineers. And that, I think, covers uh, engineering. Um, not the most exciting video that you're ever going to see as far as uh, gameplay. It's a bit like the one I did covering uh, the manufactured and encoded materials. Um, not interesting to watch, but the information is there. And, and that's the important bit as far as this video goes. So there we are. That is uh, the guide to materials uh, complete. So, yeah, it didn't have to go on for a fucking long time, but uh, it's all there now. So, yeah. Now you know where to get the materials and what to do with them. So, uh, yeah, that is this guy done. The next guide then is going to invo involve uh, Thargoids. Uh, even though these are for beginners, I don't recommend that beginners instantly decide, alright, I'm going to go out and take on Thargoids, because, yeah, you're going to be in a whole fucking load of shit if you try that. Um, but, once you've got a ship capable of taking them on, uh, well, some of them are easy. One of them is pretty easy. The others are absolutely not easy at all, in 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 any way. But uh, yeah, I mean, I can at least give you a guide and point you in the right direction uh, for those. So that is for next time then. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, that's the materials guide uh, done. So now, go away.